Hey, what's up everyone, Ollie here. So I've been using the iPhone 12 Pro as my main phone since its release, around four or five months now, wanted to give you my long-term review. I also want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning platform where you can learn new skills like web design, photography, and video. It's perfect for anyone who wants to expand their knowledge and creativity and is suitable for both beginners and professionals. Skillshare classes include a combination of video lessons and projects and you can take them whenever you like and fit them around your schedule. With the current climate, I feel like it's a great time to learn a new skill or deepen an existing passion. One of my favorite topics is UI UX design and Skillshare has some of the top UI UX classes so you can master your skills. There is a class called Digital Design, Creating Design Systems by Dan Maul. This class will teach you how to create a design system, guide your system and adapt it for future projects. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when you compare it to in-person classes or workshops. A premium membership costs just $10 a month. So make sure to check out the link in the description. The first 1000 people will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. So when it comes to the iPhone 12 Pro, the biggest change is of course the design. My favorite designs used to be the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 5, but now I actually think the iPhone 12 Pro is my favorite looking iPhone. I love the overall design language. I love the squarer and boxier design. I also feel like it makes it easier to hold. The matte finish on the back is also great. I really do like matte finish phones like this. It just hides fingerprints much better. The only thing is the stainless steel side rails Although they look fantastic, they attract a lot of dust and a lot of fingerprints. I do wish these also had a matte finish like they do on the standard iPhone 12. Like I've said in previous videos, I feel like Apple does a really good job of making their phones feel and look like pieces of jewelry. You know, they don't just look like your ordinary piece of tech, they make them look expensive. And so they should be considering how much they cost. The OLED screen on the iPhone 12 Pro is great. Fantastic quality, the images, videos, whatever you're doing on it look great but I do wish it was a high refresh rate display. After using high refresh rate displays on Android phones and of course the iPad Pro, I feel like animations on the iPhone 12 just look choppy. It just doesn't look as smooth. Now I feel like this isn't a big thing to complain about because you do get used to it, but it would have been nice to have a high refresh rate display. I can also see why they didn't do it though. I feel like most iPhone users probably wouldn't notice. I feel like only people who are really into tech notice it especially because I asked a lot of my non-tech friends to try out the Google Pixel 4 compared to the iPhone 12. Google Pixel 4 has a 90 hertz refresh rate display. You can definitely tell the difference in animations. Put them side by side. My non-tech friends did notice some difference, but to them it's really not a big deal. They don't see it as a defining feature or something that they feel like they need in their next phone. So I can completely see where Apple are coming from and why they didn't include it. But hopefully in the next generation of iPhones, we do start seeing high refresh rate displays. I think it just gives an overall smoother experience. MagSafe. So this was an interesting feature that Apple introduced on the iPhone 12 and I was really excited for it. I was thinking there's gonna be some amazing accessories. We're gonna be able to do quite a lot with MagSafe. But I'll be honest, my excitement for it has sort of waned and I'm just like, eh, you know, it doesn't feel all that special anymore. It is useful though, especially with more and more accessories coming out. I do use MagSafe now and then. I've bought quite a few accessories, including MagSafe chargers and the MagSafe wallet, and I do use them now and then, but I feel like it's not a feature that I think, oh, I really, really need it. I feel like the use cases of it are still quite limited. It is very much just a sort of side feature, something that just sort of sits in the background. Again, I don't think it's a very defining feature of the iPhone 12, but it's a nice to have, and I think one of the most useful features for it are in the car. So if you get a MagSafe charger in your car, just being able to plop your phone on, have it charging automatically, and not have to worry about with clamps or anything like that, I think that's a great use case of MagSafe. As expected, the camera on the iPhone 12 Pro is fantastic and it routinely takes great pictures. I really enjoy the pictures that come out of this phone. I just feel like they look really clean, really natural, and it always does a good job of nailing the white balance. With the introduction of Pro Raw though, what you can do with the pictures is just amazing. You can manipulate them and make them look just the way you like, I've been really impressed with Pro Raw. I've been really impressed with the quality and the sort of grading that I can do on the pictures. And it really opens up the possibilities of iPhone photography in general. I can use the Lightroom presets that I use on my professional cameras on the same pictures that I take with the iPhone. And yeah, the pictures just look fantastic. Battery life has been great. I've had no issues with it. I can easily get through a day with normal use. With heavy use, like watching videos, playing games, I can burn through it quicker than that. So I might need to charge in the middle of the day. 
But I think for most people who are just using it for normal usage, you should have no problem getting through a day. If you're a heavy user and you require better battery life, I would recommend the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It will last you much longer. Also, the battery health on my iPhone 12 Pro is still sitting at 100%, which is good to see. Performance. Apple's chips that they put in the iPhones are just so good. But I have no issues with performance at all. I feel like I have no stuttering, no freezing, nothing. It just works all the time. It has the A14 chip and whatever I throw at it, it just handles it. I've edited 4K videos on it. I edit photos in Lightroom, Pro Raw photos in Lightroom. And yeah, it just handles it, no problem. I think what is great though, is that because of that blazing performance, the phone shouldn't feel slow for a few more years which is important for those who hang on to their phones for two or more years. So would I still recommend the iPhone 12 Pro a few months later? Of course I would. I love it. I've had no problems with it. I love the camera on it. I love the design of the screen. I love everything about it. It's just a fantastic all round phone. So for those who got to the end of the video, please leave a comment below on what phone you're using right now. It's nice to see what phones other people are using. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.